All right. Uh, good evening. Welcome to Grace Point Thursday night teaching. Or if you're live on Facebook, you're just continuing on. When a series on Matthew, and I've been hitting, I've been hitting one thought the last four weeks here, going on the fifth week now in a row. I've been hitting this thought about learning from Jesus as we're walking through the gospel. So, Father, I pray. I'm asking from my heart, Lord, that you open all of our hearts and minds. We're all believers, Lord. We're all hungry for you at some level. And if we're not, Lord, give us hunger. Grant us spiritual hunger, Lord. The Word of God says, blessed are those that hunger and thirst for righteousness because they're going to be filled. I believe that. I'm hungry. If someone's watching me, Lord, they got to be hungry. So I'm praying you open the eyes of our heart and the eyes of our understanding and grant us that precious spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Let us know the power that's available to us and the authority of the believer and the riches of the glory of your inheritance in the saints and the hope that we're called to. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so we're going to pick up. Jesus had asked his disciples, who do people say I am? And we learned last week they had a cloudy and actually a false belief on who Jesus was. And the reason they couldn't know who Jesus was is they weren't following him. Jesus does not become clear to us until we follow him. He comes and knocks on our door. He says, open up. And if you open up, he'll come in and he'll sup with you. And then he'll reveal himself to you. And he says, and I'll reveal my father to you as well. That's to those that open up the hearts. If you don't, just like we've studied, everything will be in parables and mysteries. You won't know the secret or the secrets to the kingdom of God. You'll be left outside because your heart is wax gross. Your eyes are dim and your ears can't hear. But if you come with a noble and true heart to the Lord, he's knocking, you open, you're ready to repent. You're ready to obey. You're ready to believe by faith in the Lord. He is going to reveal himself to you. So the people all got it wrong. But now Jesus turns and he asks this all important question. And that's the very question he's asking me today. Brian, he's asking you. You're in on this. He's asking me today. And if you're out there listening, he's asking you this very question. Who do you not Brad Kittle, not your pastor, not, not the theologian that you like. And you know, there's very few theologians that agree with each other on all these different things. People disagree here and there all over the place. He's not asking you about what they believe. He's saying the all-important question, who do you say I am? And one of the most challenging things for me as a pastor is to deal with people that have come from all different religious backgrounds. And you're teaching the word of God. And I remember I've, taught, I've mentioned this before, but I was in a Bible study and I say, hey, listen, I don't care if you disagree with me, but please bring a scripture, challenge me, because there are some things. There are things, obviously, there are things that I'm still grappling with myself. You know, I'm a tither. I believe in tithing. But there have been people that have, you know, not believe in it. And they brought out some good points. And I listened to them. Okay. You know, and they, they don't believe in it. Okay, fine. You know, I get that. I still believe in it. And I have my reasons why. But I'm listening. Like, why? But, but what, I, what I value is they're grappling with it. What I won't accept is they don't want to tithe because they're greedy or they're selfish or they're stingy or they're disobedient. Or because they just don't want to. Or some people think, well, this is how I see it. That's exactly what happened in that Bible study I was at. When I said, hey, if you disagree, just... And then, I mean, almost immediately, like clockwork, I'm teaching. And someone said, I got, you know, and they say, hey, I don't agree with that. And I go, why? Well, I think, I, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> immediately, it became, I was teaching out of the scripture. It became immediately, this is what I believe. And in this one measure, I'm like, I don't care what you believe. 
if you're not bringing some scripture, the word of God into it and showing me what you've got out of the scriptures that are telling me why you believe this. Like people that say that tongues don't exist anymore and the gifts of the spirit have stopped. I have never heard one good biblical argument that that's true. I've heard that the only thing I've ever heard, I think Mr. MacArthur taught that in 1 Corinthians 13, that, that the Bible is that which is perfect and they're no longer needed. And it was very thin and weak. Uh, the scripture interprets itself in that scripture. He said, when we see face to face, first John says, when Jesus comes back in, comes back, that's when we're going to see face to face. That's when the perfect is going to come very thin. And besides that, you knew you need two or three witnesses anyway on that. So I don't believe them. And I'm encouraging you. It's not what other people say Jesus is. It's not what your pastor says Jesus is, although if you have a good pastor, he's probably going to teach you right. Who do you say he is? Who do you say he is? Are you searching the scriptures or are you just believing what mom and dad told you? Are you just believing? Do you know if you went to a Baptist church and you believe just what your pastor says, you'll always be a Baptist. And if they're wrong in certain areas, you're going to be wrong in those areas. Or if you're a Presbyterian, I just believe what my Presbyterian pastor, you're just going to be wrong in the areas that they're wrong in. If you're a Catholic, oh, I just believe what the Pope says, whatever he says. God is not going to ask you when you die, who did Pope Francis say that I was? Is he going to ask that? Christian, Baptist, Pentecostal, charismatic Christian out there. Is God going to ask you what the Pope believed when you face him and stand before him on the day of judgment? No, he's not. He's not going to say, what, who did Pope Francis say I was? He's going to say, who do you say that I am? And you better say, you're my savior. You're the son of God. You're the savior of the world. Now, there are some essentials that all true Christians believe. But if we really want to grow in the Lord and we really want to know the scriptures, we need to dig in ourselves. And I've learned there are some teachers I can trust more than others. But the but the word of God and the spirit of God are always my barometer. And I do listen to other people. So he asked this all important question. Who do you say that I am? Besides that, that's the only thing that's ever going to help you anyway. Your mother's faith is not going to save you. Your wife's faith is not going to. I don't care who your wife says Jesus is. Her faith is not going to save you. Your kid's faith is not going to save you. Your pastor's faith is who do you say that he is? I believe he's the Christ, the son of the living God. And Simon answered, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Now get this, because this accentuates everything I've been teaching here the last five weeks. And Jesus answered and said unto him, blessed are you, Simon, son of Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father who is in heaven. Hallelujah. What have I, what have I been teaching? Five weeks ago, 1 Corinthians 12, the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God because they're spirit taught. That's what Jesus is saying. My father's teaching you this. You're blessed because my father is teaching you this. Those other guys, they were wrong because my father wasn't teaching them. You got the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Ephesians chapter 1. You have the spirit of wisdom and revelation. My father has taught you this. You can learn all you want to about God, but if the Father is not teaching you, if the Spirit is not teaching you, you have a cloudy view of Jesus at best. Good news. It's your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. He wants to teach you. He wants to open up your heart. He wants to open up your mind. He's knocking at the door and he says, if you let me in, I'll teach you. You just have to have a willing and obedient heart. He says, Simon, you've missed it a lot, but you got that right. I am the Christ. 
I am the son of the living God. My father taught you that. It's like that teaching um, where Jesus says, I thank you, Father, because you've hid these things from the scholars and the intellectuals, the wise and the prudent, but you, you've revealed these unto babes and sucklings. I think that was in chapter 11 of Matthew that we already went over before. A guy can be a PhD, a Greek scholar, know everything about Hebrew and the Greek, teach it all day long, be the most brilliant man in the world. You can be dazzled by his intellectual ability. But if the Holy Spirit is not teaching him, if the Father is not revealing who Jesus is, they can't even be saved. Some people believe that Christianity is just an intellectual argument, something that you have to study apologetics and defend. The power of Christianity is in this transforming ability to the person that will open their heart, the way he changes your life, the testimony of the Spirit in your life, the purity of your character, the boldness of your witness. The love that you show to others. The goodness of God, the power of God working in your life because you've opened your heart to the Lord and he's working in your heart and you become a living ladder that nobody can deny. There's a place for study. It's important. There's a place for apologetics, I suppose. But the power of Christianity is in the power of you becoming a living ladder, just like Jesus was. Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, because flesh and blood has not revealed. Where am I at, Brian, on time? Because flesh and blood has not revealed this uh, to you, but my Father in heaven. We'll pick up there next week. And if you're on 